Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my iOS development tutorial where I'm going to show you how to make real iPhone applications. In this part of the tutorial, we are going to make the iPhone calculator that you have on your phone right now. And with this knowledge, you'll be able to make numerous other different related applications. Like always, the entire project is available for free on GitHub. There is a link in the description. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so at the end of this video, you're going to have this application and you're going to be able to come in here and go and make calculations. You're going to be able to use the percent, of course. You're going to be able to go and change the sign. You're going to be able to clear the data. It is going to be rotatable and a whole lot more. And if you didn't watch the previous tutorial, you definitely should. Otherwise, you may find parts of this confusing. And now I'm going to jump over and give you a brief overview of how we're going to create our icon. All right, so like before, what I did, I went to canva.com. And this is a free site where you can go and get logos and such. So I just clicked on logo there on the screen. And you can search for different things that you'd like to use for logos on your application. And refer to the first part of the tutorial in regards to how we can go and create a logo. You could then go to a site like photoenlarger.com. You can go to any of these. These aren't sponsored or anything. To enlarge your image because you're going to want the icon you create to be 1024 width by 1024 height. And I went and created one automatically that you're going to be able to use. And I'm going to have all my icons auto-generated for me by going to appicon.co. All these sites are free, of course. And here is the logo that I created. And to have it auto-generate all your icons for you, just drag it over there, drop it inside of there. There you can see is my icon. And click on Generate. And it's going to go and generate all those icons for you. You can go and get those icons and unzip them. Then what we're going to do is jump over and create our application. And then we'll drag those icons inside of there. So we'll just open up Xcode and come in here and go File and New Project. You can also, of course, from the Xcode loading screen, create a new project by just clicking on Create a New Xcode Project right here. And then once you do that, you're going to see this window pop up. You're going to want to select Single View App and click on Next. And of course, click on iOS up here. And then you have to give it a name. I'm going to keep this very simple. I'm just going to call this Calc. And if you didn't watch the previous tutorial, I'll show you here in a second how to set it up so that your Apple ID can be used as your developer account. You're, of course, going to type in your name. You're going to provide a unique identifier. I use my website. If you don't own a website, you could just type in com dot and then whatever your name is. Select Swift and Storyboard. And we're going to get to Swift UI as this tutorial continues and uncheck all these things and click on Next. Then you're going to define exactly where you want your application to be stored. I'm going to store it in Make iPhone Apps and click on Create. And then you're going to see a page like this. If you want this to work on an iPad, keep this checked. If you don't, uncheck it. That's all you have to do. In regards to having a loading screen or a launch screen, just click on this and Main, and it will auto-generate your launch screen, which makes it very easy to work with. Everything else there should be checked. In regards to signing and capabilities, you can see here I have my name inside of there. You might not. To set that up, just go to Xcode and Preferences, and then click on Accounts, and go and log in with your Apple ID and password. And there you have a free developer account already set up for you. If you want the fonts on your screen to be bigger, just go and click on Fonts and Colors, come through, hold down Shift, and select all of these. I'm going to take this up to 36 so you can see it a little bit better. In the console, you can also increase that, and I'm going to change that to 36. Close that, and now all your fonts are going to be bigger. All right. And also, if you logged in with your account, you're going to be able to select right here your name, and everything will work. Up here, we can go and select what type of where we want our application to run. I have it set up with my phone. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to set that up. What We're going to go and set this for our simulator instead. So I'm going to just have it be iPhone 11 Pro. doesn't matter. This app's going to run on every single iPhone. 
And now you have all the basics set up and we'll be able to go and have our icons auto-generated. The icons are going to be in the assets folder right here. And you can see that if I have this selected, that we have app icon right there. But if I select it, you can see that we do not have any icons inside of here. We need to have all of our icons at these specific resolutions. And that's what we did at appicon.co. And now I'm going to go and get all those created app icons and load them in my application. And how we're going to do that is I am going to find calc, which is right here. This is the application that I just created. And I'm going to increase the size of this until I see app icon icon set that we have right there. And then I have app icons. This is what I just downloaded. And you can see right here, if I open this up, app icon set is right here. So that's app icon set. And I want to go and replace it. So I'm just going to drag it over here and drop it inside of my assets folder. And it's going to say, do you want to replace it? And I'm going to say yes. And they've been replaced. And now I can see all of my auto-generated icons. So that's how easy it is to create a custom icon. Now I'm going to jump over into my storyboard where I'm going to be able to lay everything out. So I'm just going to click on storyboard. And now it's time to design my calculator. Now I'm going to want my background for my application to be black. How you set that up is just come over here, click on view controller, click on view, and you're going to see view. This is going to represent the entire iPhone view, every single part of the screen. And the safe area, as you can see, is going to not cover the notch or the part down here where you would swipe to close the application. So this is called the super view, and this is called the safe area. Well, we want a background to cover the entire app, so I'm going to select view right here, and I'm going to come over inside of here, and where it says background, I'm going to change this to black. Say black color. Boom. Now everything is black, even though it looks blue. Now it's black. All right, good. Now what I need to do is go and get a label inside of here and all the buttons. I can click on the little plus sign up inside of here and get a label. I'm going to drag that label over and you can see like there's a little dash line. doesn't really matter where it is. I'm just going to drop it inside of there. I'm going to change the what shows up here in regards instead of label, I'm going to have this be zero. I'm going to change my text color to white. So just come down here and click on white color. I can sort of say, well, you're going to see it as soon as I hit enter up here where it says zero, very tiny. I'm going to change my text on this by clicking on the little T here. And I'm going to change this to 50. And I'm going to click on done. And now you can see it's there. I'm going to want this to be right aligned like a calculator. So click on that. And that's basically all I'm going to do for our label. And this is going to be where all the numbers show up for our calculator. Now I need a whole bunch of buttons. So what I'm going to do is just click up here on the plus, get a button, drag it over here and drop it anywhere. And the very first thing that shows up, the very first upper left hand corner button, you can go and open your iPhone or do whatever you'd like with this. It's not going to say button, it's going to say AC and that's going to clear the screen. And I'm going to have my text color for this. Actually, I'm going to keep it black. So let's come down here and black color. I'm going to change the font instead of 50. Let's go and have it be something like 40, just a little bit smaller. And I'm going to use a light gray for my background. So just come down here where it says background, click on that, and then look for where it says light gray, which is down here, light gray color. And there it is starting to look a little bit better. And then I'm going to get some more buttons. So let's click on this, drag this over here. Doesn't really matter where it is, but I'm going to put it next to each other so it looks a little bit better. I'm going to have to handle the sign part here. So I'm just going to go plus and minus. Take the font right here up to 40, as you can see right there. Done. I'm going to use white text. This is where you change your text color. White color for our text. And then for our background color, I'm going to use an orange background. I'll just come through here until you can find orange. It says system orange color. There it is. Now you can see that's coming together. And then I'm going to have to do the same for a percent. So I'm going to come over here, get a button, drag it over here, drop it in there, change this to percent, change the color to white, come down here where it has the background color, make this orange as well. So just scroll down inside of here and orange. 
And also I'm gonna change the font on this to 40, just like I did previously. And then I'm also going to put a division button inside of it. So just plus button, drop this inside of here and change this to division, change the font to 40. Might change this depending upon how it looks. Change my text color to white. Change the background color to orange. And I just actually opened my iPhone and looked just to double check the colors. And these are actually light gray, so just select them and just go and select light gray instead, right down here. And then do the same for this one right here. Again, backgrounds and light gray. And there it is. All right, so we got our first row of buttons and now we need to go and create some more buttons. Oh, you know what? I'm also gonna change the text color to these to black. And this one also is going to be black for our text color. I'm just trying to make it consistent. And now I need another row of buttons. Now we're gonna have a seven and drop it inside of there and go and change this from button to seven, change this to 40 and there it is going to give this a text color of white. So way down at the bottom and then come down here and I'm gonna change this to dark gray for our background color. So dark gray and there's that. All right, so now we need to add in some more buttons. So drop this over here and we're gonna change this to eight. We're gonna change this to 40 and there it is. And change this to white just like before and then we will change our background again to dark gray and there we go and then we'll get the nine and change this to nine change this to 40 and change the text color to white and then background color once again to dark gray and then we will finally go and get another button here drag that inside of there and this is going to be multiplication and throw multiplication a star or do I want an X? I think I'm gonna put an X inside of there just make sure you're aware of what you did later on in your code which will be important change this to 40 again done and then we're going to change our text color to white just like the division and then down here with the background we will change it to orange and there is orange. And there we have multiple rows. All right, so for your homework, which is right now, what I want you to do is come in here and create the rest of the rows of buttons. Pause your video, and whenever you come back, I will have all of them on here. All right, we're back. All right, so now it's a matter of going and organizing these so they don't look so jittery and all over the place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick these in a view. So I'm gonna select all of these rows and then I'm gonna come down here, click right here, and then I'm gonna click on stack view and it should automatically be set to horizontal. And I'm gonna do that for all of the different rows. So just select the next row. Again, come down here, click on stack view and that's horizontal. We'll worry about all the other settings here in a minute select come down here stack view and get this one as well and stack view and then the final row and stack view and there we go don't worry about the label for now don't put it in a stack view yet now you're going to want to select all of the you're going to want to select the label as well as the stack views so i'm going to come over here this is our label and then we want to select the stack view. So just hold down shift key and there you're going to get all the stack views. And then you're going to put those in a stack view. So again, come down here, stack view, except this is going to be a vertical stack view. Okay. Now what we need to do is go and select this main stack view that we have here, which is this guy right here. We can go and increase the size if we'd like. And we're going to set some constraints so that this fills the screen. So we're going to do that by coming down here, clicking on this little guy. And you can see the constraints that are set up. I'm going to uncheck constrain margins. And I'm going to zero out the top. And you can see a little red bar showed up there. I'm going to actually use the safe area for this. I'm going to zero out this guy, zero out this guy, and zero out this guy. 
and then I'm going to click add four constraints and you're going to see that that's stretched out here but it still looks like a mess don't worry about that and let's say that I want to come in here and change the the constraints a little bit let's say that I don't really care about the top being in the safe view so I'm just going to come over here where it says stack view top select that and then I can come over here and change it from safe area top to super view and you're going to see it pops up there but it shows as 44 here so just make this zero and now it goes and butts up to the top and you can go and verify that everything else here is good the bottom I'm going to want that to be in the safe area so they'll be able to close my app and if you come over here safe area bottom stack view bottom all right that's good and everything else is looking good in regards to the trailing which is the right side of our app and the leading which is the left side of the app now what I want to do is further fill in this area so make sure you still have your main stack view selected it's right under safe area and I'm going to have my alignment be fill you can see everything stretched out there and then my distribution to be fill equally there everything's starting to look a little bit better I'm going to change my spacing from 12 to 1 so everything gets a little tighter and then what I want to do is select all my other stack views so that's going to be all the buttons and all that stuff so this guy this guy this guy this guy and this guy and then I'm going to come over to the side here make the spacing on those also be equal to one and go and what am I going to do with the alignment I'll leave it as fill however I'm going to change my distribution to fill equally and you can see look at that boom everything's coming together now what I want to do is I want to have the zero take up half of the screen like it does on the iPhone application calculator and then move everything over here the dot and the equals to the right so I'm going to select the decimal hold down shift also get the equal sign and I'm going to put those in a stack view so select down here stack view they're all messed up but I'm going to say I want to distribute equally so distribution distribute equally and you can see they're lined up exactly like I want them so everything's looking fantastic basically the only thing that isn't looking good is our label up here so I'm going to come over select our label and I want to set it up so that it isn't butted up to the right side of our application so to do that I'm going to put it in a simple regular old view not a stack view view you can see that's all white to get rid of that we can click on backgrounds and clear color now we'll be able to see our O again but everything's messed up even worse now so what I want to do is add some constraints to this I'm going to put a little bit of a margin on it so come down here add constraints and I'm going to say that I want a 20 margin on the left and a 20 margin on the right and I'm going to have zero for the top as well as the bottom and click on add for constraints let's go and give these stack views names that make a little bit more sense so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select the stack view and I'm going to have this be AC through division stack view and for this one I can close that now I can go and give this a name that says seven through malt stack view and this one will be four through subtraction stack view and this is one through uh, add stack view and then this one will be zero through equals stack view now we got to fix our label here our constraints are off a little bit for trailing which is the end we have this this is the super view which is fine and 20 we have for the top the view and the super view top that's fine the leading also super view that's fine let's come in here and change this to number label give it a name and I made a little bit of an error I'm going to I want these constraints on the label and I accidentally selected the view no problem actually it's a good thing that you see errors so that you know how to get rid of them I'm just going to select all of these constraints that I added and delete them they're gone now I'm going to select my number label and I'm going to come in here and add the constraints that I wanted to add before constraints and this is going to be zero again this is going to be 20 this is going to be 20 
and this is going to be 0 and 0 and 20. There, add four constraints, and now it's lined up good. We can come in here and double check, however. Bottom, the super view, the number label bottom, all looks good, and everything else is looking good here as well. All right, so good stuff. So now we have our layout and everything looking the way that we want it. And now what we need to do is go and get our code working with it. So to do that, come up here and click on this guy and click on assistant. And that is going to open up our view controller Swift file. I'm going to get rid of all of these comments here. And in this tutorial, unlike in the last one, I'm going to actually create a proper model view controller. Sounds really scary, but it's really not. This is the view, this is what the user sees. Then you're going to have the model. That's where we are going to do all our calculations and where we're gonna do things like store values. Like if they hit a seven, we're gonna store that. Then if they hit a multiplication, then we're gonna store that. And then if they hit eight, we're gonna store that. And then we're gonna perform the calculation and put it up here, which is going to be the result. We're also going to store whether decimals are clicked and block them from hitting multiple decimals. We're going to show results whenever the equal button is clicked on. We're going to change whatever the value is into a percent and change the signs here and clear everything with this. So you have the view, you have the model, which is the numbers and the functions, and then you have the controller. See? Controller says right here. And what the controller does is whenever it goes and it says, hey, a eight button was clicked on. What do we want to do with that? Well, we want to send it over to the model and let the model handle it. All right, so that's what's going to go on between these guys. And as I program this, it's going to make a lot more sense. Let's go and get rid of this right here. All right, so a little bit more cleaned up. So to do all that, what are we going to need from the side over here? Well, from the view, we're going to need to track whatever this guy is and change it, this label up here. So we're gonna hold down our control key, drag it over, drop it inside of there. And then this pops up and we have to give it a name. I'm gonna call this the number label and make sure that you click here and if it doesn't say label, well, you grabbed the wrong thing. So click on cancel if that happens. And instead, to be safe, what we can do is open this up and open this up, and you'll see number label right here. So once again, we can go and click on control because we want the label, we don't want the view, and we want to drop it inside of there. Now you see label shows up. All right, so good thing to watch out for. And we're going to call it number label, and it says UI label right there. If you can't see, it'll zoom in a little bit more, and then click on connect. Now we're going to be able to interact with that label. Anything else we need to go and interact with? Well, not really, aside from the fact that we're going to have to come in and do things whenever certain buttons are clicked on. So I think it's safe that we should be able to drag these buttons over. And we're going to say whenever the clear button is clicked, that we want certain actions to be performed. So, go like this. And look at that, it grabbed the view again, doggone it. So let's get rid of that again, and let's just go and work with the individual buttons. So stack view, and get rid of this, and get this guy over here. Actually a good thing that this happens. All right, so control, grab the clear button, drag it over here, right there, underneath there. And we are going to call this clear clicked. And make sure where it says type that you click on UI button. And then touch up inside is just a weird way of saying the button was touched. And click on connect. And now we're going to be able to know whenever that button was clicked. Make sure you didn't drag it inside of the view did load. This is the function that executes every single time your application loads. All right. I'm going to do the same thing for the sign. So control drag it underneath of clear clicked, drop it inside of there. And what are we gonna call this one? How about sign clicked? Cause that's gonna change the sign. Make sure you change this to UI button and click on connect. All right, so we got that all set up. We also wanna do the same for percent. So control, drag it over here, drop it right down here. 
And what are we going to call this one? Well, we'll call it percent clicked. And make sure this is UI button and connect. All right. Now we're going to need to have our numbers clicked, but we're not going to set up separate different functions for every single number. That wouldn't make any sense. So let's close this for now. And let's come in to this guy right here. Get the seven, which is right here. And we're going to control, drag that over, drop it inside of there. And instead of seven clicked, we're going to call this number clicked. And Xcode is super awesome. And it's going to allow us to go and sync up all of our buttons just to, just the one function. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So UI button, everything else is fine. Click on connect. And there we go. Now what we're going to be able to do is go and get this guy right here. See it changed into a plus. We're going to tie that into all of these other buttons. You can see that shows as an eight there. Drop it. Go and get it again. I'm not holding the control key. I'm just dragging this over. Drop it and drop it and just keep doing that into the center of those buttons and do it with every single button that you have. There we are and drag those in there and then do it for the zero. And even though it might seem weird, also do it for the decimal point and you'll see why here in a minute. All right, good. So now we need to make our different math functions all work with this. So again, I'm going to go and find, let's go and get the division one first. So I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to hold down control, drop it over here underneath number clicked. And I'm going to call this math button clicked. And again, change this to UI button and connect. And then let's go and connect that to all the math buttons. So I'm going to go get this again. Don't hold down control. Just drag and drop into the middle of the button. Drag and drop into the middle of the button. Drag and drop into the middle of the button. And then we're going to do a separate thing for the equal sign. So come over here, find the equals. There it is. Control, drop it inside of there. And we will call this equal clicked. So equal clicked and change this to button. And if you want your calculator to have a whole bunch more functions, you can go and add them on there. No problem. All right, so now we have everything set up inside of our view controller to work and interact with these buttons. And we can go and test it if we'd like. So let's say we have math button clicked and uh, number clicked. All right, so we can come inside of here. Maybe it makes a little bit more sense to actually see this full screen. So just come over here, click on view controller. There it's full screen. And we can say number clicked. And let's say we want to print in our debug section, whatever that number is. Well, let's go and close this off so it stops yelling at us. So to get the text that is inside of the number for our button, we'll just say sender. And then we'll type in current title. And you have to put the exclamation mark inside of there. And then we can test this with our simulator. So just make sure you have one of the iPhone simulators up here selected and then click on the play button. And here's the simulator and I'm going to press on seven. You can see seven shows up eight, nine, five and so forth. All right. So close your simulator. We know that works. And now what we need to do is think about all of the functions we need to create in our model. So I'm going to come over inside of the calculator folder over here, create a new uh, file. So I'm going to say new file and it is going to be a Swift file. So select Swift and next. And I am going to call this calculator.swift. Click on create and there it is. Get rid of all these comments and there we go. So now we need to think about what we want this to be. Well, instead of a class, I don't need to use inheritance or anything like that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a Swift 5 tutorial, which I'll put in the description as well. You can look at that. So what I want to do instead is go and create a struct and I'm going to call it calculator. And then I need to think about what I need to do here. So. What's going to happen is they are going to click on a number, so which is going to be 
the previous value because they are then going to click on a math function and then they're going to click on a new value. So we're going to have the previous value they clicked before they clicked on the math um, button and then the new value that they clicked on. And then they're going to click on equals to show the result. So some variables I'm going to need. Well, this is going to be a value that is going to change. So I'm going to mark this as var instead of let. And I'm going to make this a string. And I'm going to give it a default value of nothing. I'm going to do the same thing for new value. And again, this is going to be a string. And I'll give it a value of nothing. What else do I need? Well, I need a result. So that's going to be the result value. And that's what's going to be shown on the number label inside of our app. So var result value. And again, string and give it nothing. What else am I going to need? Well, I'm going to need to know the math operator that they clicked on. So let's go and get that var math operator and again this is going to be a string and nothing what else might i need well one problem that could happen is let's say they start clicking on numbers and they go and click on a decimal this is something that's not quite so obvious but if they click on multiple decimals that's going to cause a problem so what we want to do is track if they have already clicked on a decimal and if they have, we want to block it. So since we're just starting off with our application, nothing's happened yet, we're going to mark that as false. And Booleans can have either a true or false value. And what else do we need? Well, as of now, we can't think of anything else. So what are we going to have to do now? Well, we're going to have to create a whole bunch of functions. And these functions are going to handle all of the interactions that take place inside of our view controller. So what sort of things take place? Well, clear is clicked, sign is clicked, percent is clicked, number clicked, math buttons are clicked, and equal buttons are clicked. We are going to have to create functions that handle these interactions with our view. So we'll do that. Go back into calculator. So we're going to have to create a function, for example, that's going to handle number button clicks. So to do that, you go function and number button clicked. So there's a function. What sort of things are we going to need to know? Well, I'm going to need to know what number was clicked. So I can type in number and this is going to be a string. And what's it going to do with that information? Well, it is going to return a value that is going to be displayed. Let's go back into our storyboard. That is going to be displayed here. Whenever they click the number, we want it to be shown up here, not in the debug section, because most people don't have their phones connected to a debug section. All right, so we're going to have to return a string. And that's how you define that. And then inside of curly brackets, we need to define everything else. Now, one thing is if we have our function here and over inside of our view controller, so let's find number button clicked. Uh, number's clicked. All right, so if we have it set up the way that it's set up now, the user's going to have to call our function and then go num colon and then pass in sender current title and all that. If we want to get rid of this num part right here, let's just get this out of here. What we need to do over in calculator is put an underscore and a space. Now we no longer have to put num inside of there, we can just put the value itself. All right, so that's all that we need to do with this. Now we, what we need to do is figure out, well, what's gonna happen here? Well, we have to think through our process. What's gonna happen is we're gonna receive the number that was clicked. We want to check if we already have a value inside of the number label. And if we do, we want to add to it. So what I mean by that is, let's say they clicked on a two and then they clicked on a five. Well, we don't want to replace the two with a five. We want to stick the five next to the two inside of that label. So we need to think about that. We need to check for repeating decimals because we don't want them to be able to come in here and go and put four 
dot five dot six dot seven that's going to cause problems so we have to block that and another thing we need to think about is that we need to return a value to be displayed in our label all right so let's just walk through this whole thing first thing i want to do is i want to check to make sure that we actually have a value inside of the result value which is this guy right here so i'm going to come in and i'm going to say if and i'm going to say not result value dot is empty so i'm going to say if the result up here is not empty doesn't have a value inside of it well in that situation i want to start a new number and i'm going to say self dot new value is going to be equal to the number that was passed inside of our function and you're going to see that this little error pops up and just click on this and let's just come down here and click on fix it's going to throw mutating inside of there so we will be able to refer to the structs version of new value and this is still complaining but well, let's just come in here and say something like return uh, nothing all right and then that'll go away okay so now we got that error out of the way we'll fix it as we continue next thing we want to do is we have our new value that was just passed in here for us to work on what we want to do is reset the result view so we'll say self result value oops and set it back to its default value and if the result value isn't empty well else what i want to do is i want to make sure i can block if multiple decimals are entered so i'm going to say if the number that was entered is equal to a decimal well come down here i'm going to say if self decimal clicked is not equal to true that means nothing's been clicked yet well then what i'll do is i'll say self new value that we're working with well it's okay in that situation because the decimal hasn't been added yet so we can add in the decimal that they typed in but now we want to say hey the decimal's been clicked and you're not allowed to click it no more so self decimal clicked is now equal to true and then if we come down here and it was not equal to a decimal point well in that situation we can just safely say that it's okay to add this new number that was clicked on to the current new value we are working with and then after we do that what we want to do is return our new value to be displayed inside of our view so we'll say self dot new value like that all right so we have the whole thing set up so that we can handle numbers being clicked what other functions do we need well we need to be able to handle also our math buttons being clicked so we'll say mutating again and function and math button clicked and i'm going to put the underscore so i don't have to worry about typing in math operator whenever we call this function and this is going to be a string and this guy is going to return a string just like before all right so what do we need to do here well the very first thing well the very first thing is i'm going to type in return and return nothing so that we can get that error to go away all right so the next thing we need to do is we need to check if there was a previous calculation and how we do that is we'll say if result value is empty and then inside of here if the result doesn't have a value then we want to store our current value as the previous value for our next calculation so we'll say self previous whoops previous value is equal to self new value and there we go so that's how we're going to be able to go and get the previous value and the math whatever that is and the new value and then whenever they click on equals show our result all right so that's what we're doing we're sort of moving these around well else if the result value is not empty 
we want to say self previous value is going to be equal to the result value instead. So we'll say result value. And there we go. All right, what else do we need to do? Well, we need to restart the creation of a new value. So we'll say self. We have a new value here. So let's go get rid of anything that was there before. We need to go and set decimal click to false. So self decimal clicked is going to be equal to false because we're creating a new value here. We are going to get our math operator and store it so that our equals function is going to be able to go and perform calculations. So whatever the math operator was, store that. And we're going to set our result value also back to nothing. Anything else we're going to do? Absolutely not. We're going to actually return nothing with our math button clicked. All right, and the reason why is nothing is what's going to be displayed in our number label inside of our view. All right, we are moving along. Next thing we need to handle our equals button being or equals button being clicked, and that is called equal button pressed and this is going to return a string that doesn't receive anything. And what's going to happen when the equal button's pressed? Well, we are first going to reset the decimal clicked to uh, nothing, or to false, I mean. So we'll say false. All right. And then after this, well, we can come down here and say return, even though it's not going to return nothing. And inside of here, what we need to do is we've been working with strings the whole time. See, these are all string. Well, that's a Boolean, but the rest are strings. So what we need to do is go and convert all of these strings into doubles, or at least the previous and the new. So these values are not going to change once they're in this function. So I'll mark those as let, or that they are going to be constants to convert a string into a double, we just go double and self. And now when I say double, I think you know what I'm talking about. It's just a number that has decimal places. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the new value. So new value double, and then change this to new value. And then after that, depending upon which one of the math functions was clicked, we're gonna perform different math operations. So we're going to use switch for this because there's a very limited number of possible values for the math operator. So we're going to check for which math operator was clicked and depending upon that we will perform different operations. So in case they clicked on plus, well in that situation we are going to calculate our new result value and store it. So we'll say the result value is going to be equal to, we're going to convert it into a string and format the type of string to say that we are going to use this as a float, whoops, percent sign, float, and then we need to perform our calculations. And that's going to be previous value double, whoops, accidentally hit that, and then we will add them and that's going to be new value double. And then we need to come in here because there's a chance that these don't have a value. So that's protecting that. I can put an exclamation mark inside of there. Those are called optionals. And it's just ways, uh, just a way that Swift helps protect us from having bad data. We're going to come in here now and handle all the other situations. So throw that in there and let's say they hit a minus. Well, in that situation, we will subtract these values and we will do this for all of the different math operators that we could potentially come across. Now make sure you put an X inside of here because main storyboard, what is your multiplication? It's an X. All right. These have to line up, have to be the same. All right. So back into the calculator world, there's this and let's, well, let's tab this in and tab this in also. However, this is going to be a multiplication. And then we will go and handle a division as well. 
and you can put the division sign in there instead but just make sure these match up and this is going to be a division and otherwise if it's neither of those which I can't conceive that it would ever be either of them what I'm going to do is just say that self result value is going to be equal to the new value dot new value and there they are and there we go all right so is there anything else we need to do well yes there is what we need to do after we do this is go self and previous value and make it equal to the result value why would we do that well we need to perform other calculations now we'll be ready and what we're going to actually return here to be displayed inside of our number label is the result of our calculation and everything is looking fantastic all right so what else do we need to do well we're going to need to reset everything so and that's going to happen whenever the clear buttons clicked so create a new function called clear button pressed and it's not going to receive anything and it is going to return a string however and this guy we're just going to say self previous value and reset it and self and new value and reset it also come in and reset our result value to nothing and our math operator to nothing and there it is and of course decimal clicked to false and then we will return a zero uh, string and that's going to be displayed on our number label what other functions do we need well we're going to need to convert our current value the inside of the input to a negative version of itself with our sign function so mutating func sign button clicked and we're going to get the current value passed inside of it and that's going to be a string this is going to be from our number label and we will return a new string which is just going to be the same number with either a negative or a positive so i'm going to say if current value is equal to zero i want to handle the situation where they either have a zero inside of there or the current value is equal to a zero with decimal places whoops zero point like that something like this well in that situation i want to just return a zero because it can't change the sign on a zero otherwise we will say whoops make sure you spell else right all right otherwise and if you made it this far please tell me in the comments because sometimes i feel like i talk to myself in my basement and nobody watches these videos i would greatly appreciate it and it won't cost you a dime all right so what do i need to do here now well i need to convert the current value to a double multiply it times negative one and return that result to be displayed so i'm going to say let result value double and this is going to be a double of course and convert it into a double whoops double and that's going to be our current value passed in there is a chance that this could have no value so we'll put an exclamation mark inside of there because we believe there will be a value and then i am going to say i want to have the reversed value which is also going to be a double and that's going to be equal to whatever the result value double is times negative one so throw that inside of there times negative 1.0 and then i can just go self dot result value is equal to convert this back to a string by saying format and percent sign and why don't i go whoops make sure you put that in quotes percent sign why don't i go and have that converted into two decimal places i don't know if that's a good idea or not but i'm going to keep it that way and then go reversed value inside of there and then after we do this i need to return the result value that i just stored inside of there 
All right, good stuff. And the final thing I need to do is handle if the percent button was clicked. And then we're done. So to do that, I'm going to select all this and just copy it because a lot of this is the same. I'm going to change this to percent button clicked and current values fine. I'm going to also verify if there's zero zeros inside of there. I'm going to return a zero inside of there if that's true because it doesn't make sense to turn a zero into a percent. And then to change this, eh, I might as well just keep this the same. And what I'm going to do here is multiply this times point or well make sure you put a zero point oh one there you are magically it's now a percent everything else is good all right so save that and now what we need to do is have the controller communicate with the model so go into view controller and we need to get a reference to that struct how we do that in the view controller is go var and calculator is equal to and call calculator whoops calculator like that and there you go now we have reference to everything in the model and don't forget your percent signs there okay so now we need to just call the right functions when the right things are clicked on pretty simple so I'm gonna come in here if clear is clicked I'm gonna go and get a value for our number label so that and to set the text for it you just go text is equal to and I'll call calculator and clear button pressed and that's it don't need to do anything else everything's handled in regards to the sign being clicked again we're going to say number label text calculator get this paste it inside of there and then follow that up with the sign whoops don't do that button clicked and the and this guy I can just select this right here I can just change this to number label and text and if there is no value inside of it I can put two question marks inside of here and in that situation just return a zero and that's good all right what else are we gonna do well I need to handle percent clicked and that's going to be almost exactly the same so I might as well just copy the whole thing here actually yeah, it's almost the same so like this and just change this to percent button clicked percent button clicked and everything else is the same what happens if they click on a number well we don't need to print out that information what we need to do instead is go number label clicked and text and all of this paste this inside of here and then go number button clicked like that whoops and then what are we going to pass to the number button clicked well whatever the the uh, text is on that button so we get that with sender current title and that's all we need to do with that all right math button clicked again jump down here paste this inside of here and instead say math button clicked and we'll put sender current title inside of there to get the math item that was clicked and then finally we have equals clicked and guess what same thing like this jump in here paste that there and follow that up with equal button the pressed yes and we don't need to pass anything to that save it we don't see any errors anywhere let's run our simulator and here is our simulator and we can do something like five plus uh, three is equal to eight that's good divided by two is equal to four we subtract two from it and we can change the sign on it if we'd like we can convert it into a percent well it went away and we can clear it and we can verify that we can't put more than one decimal inside of here and we can't and there you go guys hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and learned a whole bunch and like always please leave your questions and comments down below otherwise till next time